Team Fortress 2 has a lot of guns and stuff. And honestly, I think most of them are reasonably balanced. There are really only two or three items I would consider overpowered and they're not always game breaking. Really TF2 has more useless items than OP ones, but no one is really crying over the fact the sun on a stick is hardly used. With an upcoming update, as of this video, I'd like to think it will include some weapon balances. Now there are overpowered weapons, but I think a more interesting issue to address would be annoying weapons. You know, the weapons or loadouts that when you see players use make you groan in pain like, Dude, why are you using that? We're, we're just trying to chill here. And yeah, quite a few of them are overpowered, but there are also plenty of annoying weapons that are technically balanced, but are just a pain to deal with. I've gone through each of the 9 classes and picked a few weapons or weapon combinations that I feel are not fun to fight against. Anyway, let's start by looking at the scout. I did have to think about this one a bit. In general, Scout is a class designed to be annoying. He's like a glass cannon that's also a fly or a mosquito. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Smoke Daddy 07 with your five Oz Fortress participation badges. So when picking an annoying Scout weapon or loadout, it's more a question of which is the most annoying. Historically, the Sandman was easily the most annoying of Scout weapons being able to stun players even while ubered and bring them to a defenseless standstill. It's a good thing that over time it's been nerfed to the point where it's pretty much benign in modern TF2 with a mega slowdown effect that you can still defend yourself while under. I was thinking maybe the force of nature but the more I thought about it I find the throwable bleed items are what annoys me the most. Scout has free, cannon free weapons that can inflict bleed. It's free. I, I forgot about the Boston Basher. Technically it's 4 if you count the free room blade as its own thing. Not only that, but they are also on separate slots and can be used at the same time. The flying guillotine and rap assassin gives me big try hard energy when I face a scout using them. If you miss with one, you have the other one to make up for the miss. If you land both, they stack up. It's not very fun to fight against what almost is a scout doing his version of afterburn damage. And then again, I think it's pretty funny to watch a scout stuff up the combo and have their throw balls just donk on the ground. You may think I was going to talk about the troll just since, you know, he's, it's in the name, but honestly, I find troll goofier to fight than annoying. You might get killed once or twice before you realise you just have to look up and kind of just dodge a bit to not get hit by one, like 8 times out of 10. It's also pretty funny watching a soldier panic when they realise she learnt how to move out the way. A soldier weapon I do find rather nasty though is the Cow Mangler 5000 solely due to its secondary fire. It's my least favourite soldier weapon to fight. Giving players a very slow explosive flare gun is kind of not fun. Why is the soldier doing burn damage? It's kind of balanced out by how slow it is, but with some clever corner shots, you can easily get nasty kills. It also shuts down sentries too. Another annoying one for soldier is the conch Yor and the black box weapons. The conch box loader is a dirty favourite of mine. Passive healing and healing from rocket hits? Sounds fun for me, but not really for the other team though. I don't think it's super unfair to fight against because losing that 4th rocket does hurt and no secondary weapon means once you're out of rockets you're often out of luck as well. I still find I can survive battles that I really should have died in. We all know what weapons are here. Scorch Shot and the Phlogistonator. Evil, evil, evil weapons. If there were two weapons that I could give a major rework, it would be these two. I have no problems with the other flare guns. The Detonator gives Pyro interesting movement capability. And while the original flare gun doesn't get a lot of love, that big crit damage can be useful. 
Also in general, flare guns are a good counter to snipers. Fuck sniper. The scorch shot though. This... This is bad. At the cost of some damage and a higher self damage, you effectively have a flare gun that can hit twice. With the second shot being a guaranteed mini crit. Experienced players can easily dance around the flare once it hits you, but the push force makes it tricky if not impossible in a lot of scenarios. Also, you can do like mini debt jumps with this thing. Wow. Really the only reason not to use Scorch Shot over the other flare guns is out of honor, and you are kind of gimping yourself when you're not using it. Now, let's talk about the Phlogistonator, which I'll call the Flog from now on because only Flogs use it. Flamethrowers have always been kind of dodgy in TF2, and the accusation of playing as the W plus M1 Pyro has been a thing since, well, forever really. At least with the addition of air blast and secondaries and melees that synergize with burn damage, you can argue it takes skill to play as a good pyro. Which it does, but you know. And then you have the flog. No air blast, just burning. It's the brain of W plus M1 weapon everyone hated already turned into a whole weapon's design. Instead of something actually useful, you get the mmm meter, which is also the sound I make when dealing with this weapon. Once filled with assault from other players, you can activate it to become temporarily immortal before unleashing the crit storm from hell. Someone at Valve thought this was fun, fair, and balanced. Charging the moon meter is pretty easy. Actually, thanks to the detonator, it's too easy. On their own, both weapons are bad, but combined it's just yikes in Kane. Add bonus points that the pyro has a medic buddy popping ubers or vax bubbles while running these weapons. Ooh, I'll get to you later, Mr. Vax. I call this pulling an El Maxer, based on when said El Maxer spent an entire week ruining the Sydney Uncle Topia servers for a YouTube funny. Honestly, if the flock could only charge from damage it makes like the cleanest carbine and did mini crits rather than crits, I think it would be a lot more fair. For the scorch shot, I don't know, send it back to hell please. They probably don't want any of it though. Overall, I think Demo Man is mostly balanced and fun to fight. But I swear something has happened within the last two years that has resulted in Demo Knights becoming ungodly powerful. Probably Solar Light. I blame Solar Light. I remember when Demo Knights were just the silly meme class. You might get lucky on defense, but aside from that, you are almost always better off playing normal Demo, or even Hybrid Knight at least, swapping the boots for a grenade launcher. I think what really grinds my gears is the extra range the swords have. I've been beheaded so many times by a demo that appears to go past me but due to ping bullshittery, it will count as a kill. It's one of those weird problems TF2 has I guess. With a game that's only a few years off in age for a driver's license, players have worked out all the interesting quirks and tricks to make even the most silly of classes dominate in settings. They really shouldn't. Oh well, Demo Knight TF2 is real I guess. Oh, Natasha, my beloved. Arguably the worst and also the most annoying minigun in TF2. When I said at the start not all annoying weapons are overpowered, this is one I had in mind. While using it, you get shredded by any other heavy using any other minigun. The good thing about Natasha is the fact it's a hard counter to quite a few of the other annoying loadouts. Demo Knight, Natasha time. Log Pyro, Natasha time. That lime green scout with a bat named after a My Little Pony character committing unspeakable acts. Oh boy, look at the time. I think this is why Natasha gets so much hate. It annoys the annoying players. But I have to acknowledge it's very much not fun to fight a Natasha heavy for any player. Slowdown effects do not work well in TF2 and this is a big one on the needs a rework pile. Still, it's funny as hell taking down fleeing players with this thing, but dang, I would not want to be that player. Uh, I guess the Fists of Steel need a little shout out as well. They can be a little annoying to deal with, especially if you're a sniper going for headshots. 
I used to pair this with the buffalo steak sandwich and chase down very confused new players who didn't switch to melee for some reason. Right now it's a pretty easy argument for the Wrangler being one of the least fun weapons to be on the receiving end of. It's not so much the manual control and rapid fire but the bloody shield it has. More and more engineers have learnt they can use the Wrangler's shield to turn their sentries pretty much into a wall. The most annoying part is you are still technically doing damage but often not enough to take out the sentry. This thing absorbs 66% of all damage. That's nutty. Bonus points for those engines on attack turning the minis into a wall of annoying. That being said, sentries can still be sapped or even knocked out by the previously mentioned cow mangler, so it's not an end all annoying weapon like the flog and debt is. Aside from the wrangler, the short circuit has the potential to be annoying if the engineer has a good source of ammo. I think the giant Mega Man ball of energy flash banging my screen is the most annoying part of the weapon. The ability to stop projectiles is pretty easy to work around if you just use bullets. What I like to do with it on stage 1 of Dust Bowl attacking is to just hang out in the resupply locker and spam lemons through the gate hole. Yeah, Mega Man time! Lemons! The Ponsum 6000 needs a shout out as well, with its ability to drain Uber on medics and cloak on spies. But honestly, I've never really seen it used enough to say it's annoying. It's like engineer players just kind of forgot this weapon exists. Probably for the better. This one's easy. The vaccinator is annoying for two big reasons. First is the ability to pop a protective bubble within 18 to 6 seconds. It's really nasty. The other really annoying part is the fact you technically are still doing damage, but the damage is nerfed so hard it's just kind of... Uh, Mate, you may as well be shooting an Ubered player. At least when a medic pops an Uber, you know you're not going to be able to do anything for roughly 10 seconds. But the Vax is like a tease. Maybe you could do enough damage to take out the medic and their buddy, but it feels like you're shooting pillars at both of them if the med's really good at juggling resistances. Sometimes I feel people give the Vax a pass as it's a good way to counter bots, but I think that just goes to show how stupidly powerful it is if it's considered a way to, to counter people deliberately trying to ruin the game. Also there's finishing laser tank headshots, oh, I forgot about that. The Girardi and Bushwhacker combo make most other sniper loadouts irrelevant. Girardi is already pretty bad. It nullifies burn damage, acts as a general whoop 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 button when things are going south, and grants mini crits to whomever is in splash range. But team it up with the Bushwhacker and now Sniper is able to remove his main weakness. Close range combat. In some ways you're nerfing yourself by not using them. These two are that good. The only real downside is the increase in damage from using the Bushwhacker, but 9 times out of 10, you would have been mincemeat in a combat encounter anyway. Like I said the Flog and Carbine should swap how they charge, I think the Girardi should charge the same way the Guest Passer does, and vice versa. Oh, that would fix another problem the Girardi has. You can straight up just throw endless jars if you're close enough to a resupply locker. Where is it all coming from? I guess the Huntsman and Fortified Compound need a shout out too. I swear these things run on pure luck. I don't really find them too annoying though. And I'm sure there's some Spire players out there who find the Razorback annoying, but I don't play enough Spire to run into that problem. Honestly, the Razorback's kinda useless these days, with the rise of Gun Spy. Speaking of Spy... First off, I want to apologize for the footage, I am not the best spy player. Now let me complain about the Kunai and Dead Ringer. There is a very good reason why the Kunai has the reputation it does. The Kunai is annoying for the same reason the Wrangler and Vax are, but in a way more like the Conch Box. The spy starts with very low health while using it, 
but can gain up to 200 health with every backstab. And just keep having their health pool stay large with every backstab. If a spire is skilled enough, they can pretty much keep healing themselves over and over, avoiding or tanking deaths that would occur with any other knife. Pair this with the Dead Ringer, an annoying weapon on its own, and you have a speedy spy with high health and the potential to get more. Oh, I should probably talk about the Dead Ringer as well. Even with all the nerfs it received over the years, I've never been a fan of this cloaking device. Faking a death? Pretty annoying. I played TF2 for so long I'm never fooled by it anymore. I just know how to pick up on those little signs it's a dead ringer death. The only reason to use it these days is due to its damage resistance and the speed boost on trigger. Also if you're a smart cookie you can trigger the fake death yourself to get a speed boost. Useful for getaways or position yourself in an advantage way. Also shout out to the big earner for granting a speed boost and cloak meter on kill and the your eternal reward for having silent kills. There is something very annoyingly unsatisfying about not hearing the funny death screams. So those are the weapons I feel currently are annoying to play against in Team Fortress 2. I think the general takeaway from this is any weapon that blocks damage but still allows it Effects movement speed or grants critical damage for low effort is annoying. Not always overpowered, but annoying. I wouldn't be surprised if there are weapons I haven't covered that you might find annoying. These are the ones I mostly encounter on Australian servers, and I wouldn't be surprised if other regions have different annoying loadouts. And once again, yada yada my own opinion, not talking about comp MVM stuff. I have to do this because there's always that one person who vomits pure rage because they saw a different opinion to theirs. Man, YouTube comments. That being said, leave a comment for any other weapons you find annoying. I'm sure we've all been annoyed by something in this game once. Tell me your stories about being destroyed by some of the most disgusting weapons and weapon combos in the game. Anyway, I, I hope you like the video. Boy.